thing. So Marion Williamson, right? I've gone into arguments with Marion Williamson during Afghanistan, right? I think, I mean, she's a Democrat and, you know, to be honest, getting into fights with Democrats, with like liberals, it can, it can be exhausting and I don't do it and I didn't do it here, but I want to show you something that I want to comment on. I did do it during the whole Afghanistan withdrawal debacle. It doesn't usually go well in terms of the response. So I just wanted to show you all kind of my response. I, I, she didn't respond to me, but she recently posted something I thought was interesting and I think indicative of what's wrong with the Democratic Party mindset, the liberal mindset in America. Because I think what we are seeing right now is just a monumental political crisis and we're seeing how the political establishment and all of those forces, people like Marion Williamson and those who follow her, they don't understand and they don't want to understand because I think they have a vested interest in the system, but they don't understand how this political crisis really speaks to the need for a political alternative, a real grassroots independent vehicle that working class people can hop in, join in and assert real political power through in order to place pressure on the establishment. Uh, but a lot of these forces, a lot of the liberals, a lot of the Democrats, all of them really, they are still attached to the Democratic Party apparatus. They don't want to let go of it. And I think this is the most egregious way and, and one of the more egregious examples of how this mindset really does produce what I think is such utter cognitive dissonance and really dangerous uh, just a dangerous political orientation uh, that places us at worst in a dead end. It really does place us and our movements in a political graveyard, right? And that's what the Democratic Party is. So Marion Williamson says here that they've been talking about a red wave in the midterms for so long, but the decision to repeal Roe v. Wade and of all day aftermath should change that. The people need to rise up against fascism, even when the party that should be doing so far more vigorously refuses to do so. So this is her saying that uh, the Republicans are fascism. And look, I'm not going to argue about the reactionary character of the Republican Party. It's not a working class party. It's been the white man's party, as Glenn Ford said, for two generations, two and a half generations, really, right? Ever since the so-called civil rights movement. So, I mean... Think about that, right? It, it It's not a progressive party. It's not a working class party. I don't care what any one of the Republican party says. It, it's not. But to say it's fascism is, to me, a real stretch. I think that it really bastardizes and sanitizes the word fascism. But I love this response by O'Connor class. You can't vote out fascism. Because <laughs> she's saying, Mary Williamson, that the party that should be doing so meaning the Democratic Party, refuses to do so. Okay, you can't vote off fascism. And then she says, you absolutely can. <laughs> you absolutely can vote out fascism, says Marianne Williamson. Now, all I said, and I don't know if it'll show here. Yeah, I say here, if fascism can be voted out, why was a world war needed to defeat it? Could you share an example of when fascism was voted out? And... Uh, some people are saying Bolivia was a recent example on our side here, but Chavez was elected, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then Mussolini, which is not factually correct. So there are people trying to own, but she didn't respond to me. But the tr the point is, is that Marion Williamson believes that you can vote out fascism. So the I, let me just address that Bolivia criticism, right? Oh, well, I'm here with you. Oh, well, Bolivia, I think the movement towards socialism is way more than just about electing out the fascist coup, right? And to say that the government was fascist or like that there was a fascist character in Bolivia just because of that coup, I think is, a, is just a, a huge stretch because the coup obviously was illegitimate. And it did not have the popular support of a fascist movement. There were fascists who believed themselves to be in a fascist movement who were committing violence. I'm not negating that. But to say Bolivia's government after that coup was fascist, 
I think undermines the legitimacy of the movement towards socialism and why it was able to unelect the coup government, right? Why it was able to overthrow it because there was already a structure in place which disallowed that fascist coup to remain, right? Despite the fact that Bolivia in that movement towards socialism doesn't really have control over its military and police, doesn't have really the support of them as much as maybe it would want. So nonetheless, right, fascism is a huge stretch to call Bolivia. But the point here is that Mary Williamson is talking about the United States. And what she is saying is that the Republican Party is fascism, the Democratic Party should be electing it out, and that we can help them do so. So basically what she's saying is that we need to support the Democratic Party to elect out fascism. She's supposed to be to the left, right? The left wing of the Democratic Party. But basically, she's just repeating the narrative of the neoliberals who, during the Trump era, was saying, well, we need to elect out Trump because he's fascist and we're not. What that leads us to is actually, I think, the road to actual fascism, if we're not already there, because essentially what fascism thrives off of, one, the destruction of a communist in socialist movement, right? Fascism is about repression. It's about total repression. It's about resolving the class war totally, right? It's about destroying any alternative. So fascism thrives off of that. And fascism is really the consolidation of capitalism in its most violent form to maintain and protect its hegemony right? It's to maintain and protect its profits, its interests. And it's when the capitalists basically say, well, the only way to do that is by clamping down in the most extreme forms, take away all the bourgeois freedoms, take away uh, as much as we can in order to reproduce this system in a time usually of crisis. The crisis usually coming from a strong socialist movement encroaching uh, toward power, or, and economic crisis leading to mass disillusionment, leading to mass dissatisfaction. And so Marion Williams' orientation here actually helps out both of these, I think, kind of, um, how should I say, catalysts for fascism. Because by saying that we need to support the Democratic Party, she's spreading mass disillusionment because the Democratic Party has nothing to offer, to offer working class people. So the Democratic Party, the Biden administration now, this tiny majority they have in Congress has delivered absolutely nothing, right? You could say, you could, I mean, you can nitpick and say, oh, they delivered something. But I'm talking about tangible improvements of people's lives. Even the child tax credit that the COVID package, right, the American Recovery Act or whatever it was, put into place that that ended you know that ended in a very short period of time so that child poverty that was reduced has just come soaring back and now with inflation and all of this i'm sure that it's even worse but the economic situation is a catastrophe u.s foreign policy is a catastrophe with the russia ukraine conflict and the u.s's addiction to prolonging it sending billions upon billions i mean we're heading toward a hundred billion dollars by the time this is over whenever that is but it's heading in that direction of U.S. invest military aid and investment in Ukraine to fight Russia. I mean, Joe Biden has no plans on doing anything about gun violence, has no plans to do anything about inflation, is telling us so, is saying there's no predictions on whether this will get better, when it will get better. I mean, that's who Mary Williamson is telling us to support. That's the Democratic Party. That's who she's telling us to support. So what is that going to foster other than mass disillusionment? We have it now. Mass disillusionment amid what is a, a fledging, if not already an economic crisis, because we just had an economic crisis 2020, arguably 2019 into 2020. And now there's this uh, uh, really dire economic situation that could be called a crisis. So you have the crisis, you have the mass disillusionment being spread, and by default, you have suppression, maybe not the suppression, although it is happening, right? Of socialists and communists, it is happening. It's always happening in the United States, political prisoners, the ways in which revolutionary organizations are still surveilled and suppressed more than anyone else. But 
even more, I think, powerful is how the soft power of the Democratic Party, by tampering down expectations and by creating a there is no alternative, the Tina neoliberal model, right, in the political realm, by creating this uh, idea that the Democratic Party is all that there is, that hurts the ability of socialists, of worker, of, of working class organizations to gain any kind of foothold with the masses, therefore generating kind of this perfect environment for fascism. And so Marion Williamson here is basically helping lay the basis for that. And I think that it's worth noting because this is the mentality that we are going to be facing day in and day out leading into November, the midterm elections, and then leading into the 2024 election. We're going to be told by these so-called progressives, quote unquote, that we need to vote for the Democrats. They're going to have their so-called laundry list of things that they want. And they're going to say, well, if we vote for the Democrats and we give them their support, then once they have all of this so-called power and majorities, that they're going to do what we want. And we're going to be there watching this happen. And we're going to see how it doesn't work. And we're just going to get more of the same. And the misery is going to worsen. Do you see what I'm getting at here? That it doesn't, that it's, it's just not any kind of solution that we should be striving for and that it does lay the basis for fascism and that is very 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 dangerous so mary williamson sometimes i think that you know she has a, a pretty big following i have a good friend who loves her uh, uh she is close with a lot of people who we would consider bernie sanders leftists or people Sandernistas, people who supported bernie sanders and the squad etc she has a lot of relationships with those forces but I think Mary Williamson, to her credit, she really does demonstrate through what I think is actually quite, I'm not going to call her courageous, but I'm going to say that I give her credit for actually putting these ideas out without any hesitation. Because we see that a lot of the Bernie Sanders contingent, a lot of the squad contingent, they are, they, they kind of get mealy mouth, they kind of try to beat around the bush they try to they try to move around politics they try not to say what they mean they try to avoid a lot of issues but marion williamson she will take to twitter and she will tell you that uh biden is doing an amazing biden is doing a horrible job with the withdrawal in afghanistan because the united states needs to do more militarily because this is a moral question, right? She'll literally say we need to just continue the war in Afghanistan just on the basis of morality, quote unquote, or she'll take the Twitter as she did here and say, well, you just need to vote out the Republicans because we need to support Democrats if we're going to, if we're going to avoid fascism, right? And she is just more than willing to do that. So it actually brings sort of these teachable moments. So I guess I just want to thank Mary Williamson for bringing these teachable moments for us to dissect and analyze because i think we do need to talk about this and think about this and act upon this and challenge this because it's going to be something we see over and over and over again with people like mary williamson people she's close to she has a lot of connections people keep her close and look i think we need a broad movement of the working class. We need to work with everyone we can on things that we agree with. But I also think that when there are antagonistic contradictions that emerge, when there are these antagonisms that cannot be reconciled just by saying we agree to disagree, I think this is one of them, then we have to come out and challenge it. And uh, that's what this is, right? Because you can't vote for the Democrats. Like, Wait, voting for the Democrats and just sitting on your hands is a waste of time. Honestly, I'm not going to vote shame anyone. You want to vote for the Democrats as an individual, go ahead. But by claiming that this is some kind of collective response that is satisfactory is very dangerous. It is going to do what the Democrats have been very successful in doing, which is neutralizing movements by channeling them into the Democratic Party. And we are going to be in a worse situation because the Democratic Party, whenever it gets power quote unquote, majorities in Congress or whatever, what does it do? Well, it essentially completely and entirely 
betrays the interests of the working class movement. It does nothing for working class people. And actually, it becomes a more effective evil of imperialism. It actually can do things that Republicans can't do. And some people take issue with this. But I would like to just say, for those who take issue with this conclusion, tell me how Donald Trump or even George W. Bush would be able to wage this uh, proxy war against Russia. Would it have been possible? The entire establishment would have seen this as a blunder, as something that they, they couldn't uh, allow Donald Trump to run and manage. I mean, it would have happened probably in some form if the time and circumstances were correct, which they weren't under Donald Trump. But nonetheless, it would have been a different situation. You would not have, you would not have had a unilateral situation where Donald Trump could risk this especially the economic catastrophe with what's going on in Ukraine and be able to get out uh, unscathed. It would be totally used as an opportunity to undermine his so-called authority because that's what a, a big part of the establishment was doing because they didn't like Donald Trump because he embarrassed them and he wasn't them. He wasn't of their ilk. You know, he wasn't a neocon. He wasn't this or that. He was dangerous. And he, and look, I don't, I, I think Donald Trump did a lot of, really bad, awful things during his administration, just like any U.S. president does. He escalated things where he was demanded to escalate them. And, uh, you know, he was a U.S. president. And, of course, he was praised when he took the moves that the establishment wanted him, the foreign policy establishment wanted him to do at the time. Bombing Syria, dropping the Afghanistan bomb, all that kind of stuff, you know, um, uh, escalating against Venezuela. Those things were good. You know, those things were cool. But I find it hard to believe that Trump would have had the same success as Biden is having in corralling Europe, in um, being able to wage this proxy war against Russia and all the damage that it has caused in the same way that Biden has been able to, right? Because Biden, Biden's on all of their teams. Biden is someone that despite his incompetence can be relied upon to just do what he's told. And while that doesn't mean that Trump was progressive in any kind of way, it does mean that this narrative that voting in a Democrat is just going to do us so much better uh, must be challenged, right? Must be challenged. U.S. presidents, regardless of what party they're in, they all work for the same interests. And the only differences emerge based on circumstances, right? Based on political conditions, economic conditions, uh, but really based upon the two-party duopoly con, right? Where they show slight ideological differences in order to distract from their bipartisan unity on endless war and austerity. So that's, I think, where Marion Williamson really is incorrect here. And to say you can vote out fascism so flippantly, I think, should give us pause and should have us reflect on, well, what are the material conditions that lead to fascism? What is fascism? Is fascism just, you know, a further right uh, element of the ruling class? Is it just the Republican Party? Or is it something a lot more complex, which required <laughs> a world war, a class war to defeat? And it will take another class war to defeat uh, its reemergence, I guess, on the global scale. But it will also take a class war to defeat the rudiments of it that we see in places like Ukraine and the United States, right? We'll take a class war to defeat it, to eradicate it. Uh, we need our own campaign of denazification within our movements. And uh, we cannot be distracted by the Democratic Party's graveyard of social movements, we can't be distracted by the Democratic Party's tendency to essentially suppress everything that we do in the name of beating back the Republicans, right? In the name of fear. We need to overcome that fear. We need to address that fear. We need to organize people into confronting that fear. Uh, we need to push back against this fear which only gets us into worse and worse and worse situations politically, economically, etc.